Hello everyone. So, in the previous couple of videos, we've talked about designing a single transistor common emitter series feedback amplifier, and also we took a look at the same topology but with shunt feedback. And we've discussed how this feedback arrangement is a lot better than this one. So in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at some experiments just so that we can prove that whatever we did here on paper actually works in real life. So we're going to start with the series feedback just as we started with the series feedback in the explanation video. So let's go, let me put this here so that we can all see. So what we have here, we have the same exact circuit that's displayed right here. The only difference is I didn't have any 12Ks and also I didn't have any um, 5.6K resistors. So here I just put two 22K resistors in parallel. So we're going to get around um, 100K here, which is good because in our calculations that we did in the previous video, we actually talked about this and the perfect resistor to put in here to get 1.6 volts here was actually 11K. So yeah, there you go. In here, I just put a 4.7K with a 1K resistor in series, so we have an effective 5.7K resistor here, which would give us a, um, a VA gain of 5.7. So let's begin by taking some quick measurements, just so that we can prove that um, all our biasing and the voltages that, that we've calculated here actually appear in the design circuit. So first of all, let me probe the power supply so we have around 12 volts right now let me probe let me just turn off my signal generator because it was on so now let's probe the base right here we should have 1.6 volts there and we have around 1.6 volts there great which means we should have um, a diode drop between the base and the emitter so around one volt at the emitter let's probe the emitter and yeah about a 0.6 of a drop great now at the collector we've established that we should have around 6.55 volts again i've changed the resistor here so this is going to be slightly different but so 6.3 pretty close great so our dc operating point the bias and all everything that we set here actually holds true that is great. We have also one milliamp throw flowing through here, as we've seen. So now let's take a look a bit at the AC sides of things. So let me turn on the signal generator and uh, rearrange the camera so that we can actually see the oscilloscope instead of the motor meters. Okay, so bear with me for a second. So now that I've rearranged the camera, let's probe the circuit. Okay, first of all, the input signal, as you can see. It's around one volt peak to peak at one kilohertz. Same thing if we probe the base. Now, let's take a look at the emitter. At the emitter right here, we should have uh, exactly the same signal because the emitter should be one to one. Okay, signal's still there, same thing. Now, if we look at the collector, instantly see that we've had a voltage gain. In this case, it's around 5.7. Yeah, it's a, this is going to average out to around 5.7. You gotta keep in mind, we have some tolerance in this resistor right here, so yeah. As you can see, it's a pretty conclusive result. We've got exactly the same gain that we've discussed here, the, same, the exact same gain that we've calculated. So the circuit that we've done actually performs exactly the same in the real world. So now, let's put that, uh, that capacitor here at the emitter and see how our gain changes. So, as you can see, I've added the capacitor right here. In this case, it's a thousand microfarad capacitor. Just so that we ha don't have any sort of attenuation here while, while we are probing. I'm now inputting a 20 millivolts peak to peak signal because if you remember uh, we've calculated I, I didn't write this down but we've calculated the AC gain 
I think it was like around 220 something, if I can recall, if I recall right. So now let's look at the base of the transistor just so that we can test. I, I had to add a lot of averaging here because with this breadboard, all the wires here, the signal is just buried in the noise, but we're getting around like 20 millivolts peak to peak. Here in the in the signal generator, it says 20 volts peak to peak. Here it's also um, measuring the the noise, so just just think it's, it's a 20 millivolts peak to peak, okay? <laughs> now, so if we go to the collector, let's probe this point right here, and you can see we have a 400, around 420 volts peak to peak signal right there. Now, as you can see, we have a lot of gain from 20 millivolts to 4.2. So now let's calculate that gain and see if our previous calculations hold true as well. So let's go. So 4.2 volts peak to peak divided by our 20 millivolts, we get a gain of around 210, which is, well, it's, it's very close to what we had before in the calculations. We can call it the same way. We also, again, have uh, tolerances here and stuff like that. So it's perfectly acceptable. With this, we have established that, that all of our calculation that we've done in the previous videos actually hold true. So this circuit, we've already looked into the theory. We've gone into the practice. Now, Let's do the same for the shunt feedback. So I've rearranged the circuit to get the shunt feedback that we want. This is our circuit right now, as we've discussed in the previous video. Now let's do the exact same thing that we've done before with the series feedback, do some measurements around here, okay? So first of all, our power supply is at around 12 volts. You can also see that we have around one amp. Here we're getting a little bit less than one amp. That's fine. Uh, one milliamp, sorry. So if we probe the base, this is going to be interesting because there is 0 0.636 volts there. Just as we discussed, we only have VB here. Now, if we probe the collector, we can see we have uh, around 6 volts. It's a little bit higher, probably because of the tolerances in these resistors. So that's fine, close enough. Also, our VB uh, increased, so that since here we have a lot of gain, we'll, um, DC gain to get the bias point right here. Any small changes in VB will have a big impact here. So now that we've seen the DC operating point, everything checks out, the math works. Let's take a look at the AC side of things. Now let's take some measurements with the oscilloscope First of all, I've increased the input signal. Now we have a one volt peak to peak input. If we probe this point after the input capacitor and before the input resistor, we get the exact same signal. So it's present there. Now, the interesting thing about this topology of the shunt feedback is because of the way that the feedback works, Right here at this point, at the base of the transistor, we should have no signal at all present there. So if we probe that point, that's that still holds true. So we have absolutely no signal here. It works exactly the same way as an inverting op amp circuitry. What's happening here is that all the current is just being uh, nulled out because of the way that the feedback works. Very simple. It looks like a black hole for the signal, which is very interesting, but if we look, if here we have absolutely no signal, if we look at the collector, it's still present right there. So let's measure it. And as you can see, we have 3.8 volts peak to peak at the collector, which means that our overall AC gain of the circuit, it's 3.8. Now, if you remember from the previous video, this gain is actually wrong. We've calculated in the previous video that you should have around 4.8, 4.7 times here. So it sh we should have been seeing 4.7 volts peak to peak here. What's actually happening and why we're not getting all that gain is that we are being throttled, limited, by using this resistor right here. So if we uh, just 
ignore the whole circuitry here and look at the gain between the emitter and the collector, that gain is not sufficient enough for us to have a 4.8 uh, times gain here with this feedback network. The reason for that is this resistor, in which case you could just start increasing it, but then you decrease the current flowing through the transistor and then you start running into trouble. The best way to mitigate this and get a much more robust um, amplifier with lower distortion and all the benefits of doing uh, this is to substitute this resistor for a current source, which we've seen in the previous videos, which is going to get us uh, theoretically an infinite input impedance right here, but in uh, actual practice, what we get is just a very, very high input impedance with, while we still retain the ability to have the, a larger amount of current flowing through here. In that case, the circuit gets a lot better, we get a lot more gain, which increases our linearity and lets us have the amount of gain that we've desired and calculated here. That's going to be the subject of the next video. So yeah, I'm going to leave things here. This is going to be a short one. I hope you've enjoyed this so far. And uh, I'll see if in the next video, we can uh, take a look at the final circuit for the amplifier. Let's see if I can do that. <laughs> so yeah, see you in the next one.